Hello friends, this video on isolation of elements part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay. Now we'll talk about the refining of the metals. So once we have got the impure metal now, this is the impure metal we have achieved now, we have to make it more pure. For this we use refining and there are various ways to refine the metals. One is distillation, liquidation, electrolysis, zone refining, vapor phase refining, chromatographic methods. These methods we use to refine a impure metal. This is impure or else a raw, raw metal and this is pure. Let's start with the distillation process, a very easy process. Distillation is very useful for low boiling point metals like zinc, mercury, so for these kind of metals which has low boiling point because in this case what we do is for this scenario we boil right so this is my uh, impure or raw metal since they have a low boiling point we use this so we boil we boil this what happens is these vapors are collected here cool down and what you get here is pure metal very simple method distillation we use distillation of water similarly we can use distillation of metal also which has low boiling point metal with high boiling point you actually can't use this process the next is liquidation liquidation is used again liquidation means liquid you have to liquidify it so you we use this for metals with low melting point we are not talking about the boiling point here we're talking about the metals with low melting point which can actually easily melt for example tin tin has a low melting point so we can use this uh, method to refine tin to get ultra pure tin this is my raw tin because by this time we have got tin and i'm making it refined now this is a pure tin correct so here what we do is, is a low melting metal like tin that is made to flow. So this is a ramp here, this is inclined, there is some angle here. So the low melting tin can easily flow and you supply heat, you supply heat so that the, the metal can melt, right? With this, this is a melt, melted form. So this metal can flow on this sloping surface but the high melting impurities here please note higher melting impurities higher melting point impurities that means impurities with has higher melting points so these impurities won't melt and they will be solid right they will be solid and they won't flow they won't flow and they can easily be separated Correct. So you are melting uh, the whole uh, raw metal which has impurities also. The impurities won't melt so easily. That will be in the solid state. But the actual pure metal will melt and with this slope the pure metal will flow and this impurities will be stuck here. The next process is electrolytic refining. Here my impure metal is used as anode. This is my impure or raw metal. And a strip of pure metal is used here as cathode, right? So in this case, it is put in a suitable electrolytic bath. It has a soluble salt of same metal. For example, if I'm talking about the copper, it will have copper sulfate or copper something. If you talk about zinc, we'll talk about the zinc sulfate. Okay, so for example, I'm doing a purification of copper now. So if you see, this is my impure copper. So copper two plus will flow from uh, left to right. So at anode, the reaction I have is I have a metal copper, right? This is a copper metal. Copper metal will form copper two plus and electrons. At anode, the reaction will be something else. I'll Get this copper 2 plus from this uh, left hand side it will get some electron from here 
and it will form copper. So if you see this copper, impure copper will form copper 2 plus and copper 2 plus is flowing here and this copper 2 plus will get this two electron from here and form copper and gradually if you see the size of the raw uh, metal will sink and this impurities will settle down and what you get on the right hand side is pure copper because only the pure copper has flown from left to right. So the next is zone refining. In this, we take advantage of the fact that the impurities are more soluble in the molten state. Impurities are more soluble in molten state than in solid state. So in this, what we do is a circular mobile heater. This is mobile heater right this is a heater a circular mobile heater is fixed at one end of the rod and this is the rod this is an impure rod I can say impure metal rod and this molten zone this is a molten zone actually the one which you see in light color is a molten zone it, it, it uh, melted because of the heater right and this heater moves from one end to another. Since the heater moves from one end to another very slowly, it melts that area, right? So the molten zone also moves from one end to another. You see, this heater moves and with this heater, the molten zone is also moving, right? Because it is moving actually very, very slowly. Very, very slowly what happens is this heater, this heater moves and this heater actually melts that area, right? And the good part is this, the impurities are soluble in this molten zone. So if you do the same process 10 times, what happens is in this area, what you get is impurity, correct? Because every time the heater moves from left to right, heater carries some impurity with it because the impurity, impurities are soluble in the molten state. So if there is an impurity here, impurity gets dissolved in this molten state and with this heater, impurities comes in this direction. So gradually over a period of time, you'll see that this area is the one which has more impurities. And we then cut this area. So this whatever remaining is my pure metal right this process is repeated several times so at this end what you get is the impurities and it is very useful to produce very very high purity metals for example uh, germanium silicon right germanium silicon boron gallium indium all these high purity metals we purify using zone refining The next is the vapor phase refining. In this, the metal is collected into its volatile or converted to, into its volatile component and it is collected somewhere else. For example, there's a metal here. So we somehow make it volatile. If it is volatile, it will cross this path, come somewhere here, and you will get this component. Once it is retrieved here, what we do is we again make it non-volatile. Actually, we do something here to make it non-volatile so that it drops off here. That's what we do. So for this, it's a two important requirement. The first requirement here is the metal which I'm trying to purify, metal which I'm trying to purify, you can, easily convert into volatile with some reagent, right? Metal should be made volatile with, with some reagent. And once it is made volatile, you have to again get back the metal, right? So we should be able to recover metal from volatile complex right so first is you make the metal volatile by using some reagent and then you again convert back into normal metal using again some reagent right a good example is the mond process for refining nickel so in this what we do is there's a nickel react this with carbon monoxide at some 350 Kelvin, what you get is NiCO4. 
This is volatile. Once you have this volatile NaCO4 here, right, it will all jump here, it will go from here to this path and all the impurities will be left behind. Yeah, because the impurities are not made volatile, only the pure nickel is made volatile. And now once the nickel is here, what we do is, we will heat this nickel, we will heat this complex actually. So here we get this complex NiCO4. So this complex again, let's suppose we pass a carbon dioxide here, right, or carbon monoxide. So this complex, this complex, when I heat with again carbon, when I heat this actually, in a stream of carbon monoxide, when you heat this, what you get is nickel and carbon monoxide back. So you have to supply heat here, right, supply heat and some carbon monoxide. So what happens is you get nickel back and nickel is collected here. So if you see, we could easily convert nickel to a volatile complex and then we can we could easily recover metal back from the volatile complex. So this is the prerequisite. Okay, so this this is called nickel carbonyl actually. Okay, so this is the vapor refining method. Other uh, metals like uh, zirconium or titanium can also be used, uh, can also be refined using this method. So for that, we use something called Van Arkel method. And that is also a vapor refining method, just uh, it has been given Van Arkel method name because of, in the honor of the discoverer. So this is used for zirconium or titanium. So here what is those zirconium for example have, I'll react with iodine, I'll get cheddar I4 and this is a volatile thing. Now once I have this volatile thing, I'll heat it, I'll get zinc back and iodine back. The concept is all same, the reagents used are different. So next we'll discuss is the chromatographic method. Sometimes the, for example, metals ore has my, or the, it is used for refining actually. The impure metal has uh, some impurity and this impurity and the metal, they have same chemical properties. So you can actually, you, do, you actually can't separate them by the chemical methods. So what we do is we use this chromatographic method. Here we have something called adsorbent, this is my adsorbent. And we have adsorbate. So here the, the thing which we are trying to use here is the principle which we are trying to use here is these uh, metals and the impurities, metals and impurities, right? They are adsorbed in a different capacity. For example, sheets animation, let's suppose see here there are three different parts in this whole metal right but if you see they are adsorbed in a different level right if you see here so the adsorption capacity is different the green one is least adsorbed so it flows slower the red one is maximum absorbed so it flows faster this one the red ball and the red uh, square one is mediumly absorbed so if you want you can just watch my video on this uh, we have discussed the chromatographic method in detail how it works so we have something called adsorbent and all these metal and impurities are here, right? And the impurities are adsorbed in a different capacity. Sometimes, for example, this is my metal, pure metal. So it is less adsorbed, so it is moving faster. The green one is more adsorbed, so it is moving slower, correct? It is all because of the force of attraction between this adsorbent and the particles. So we also use a term called mobile phase and stationary phase. So this is my stationary phase adsorbent. And here's something called mobile phase. This is all my green, reds, and this ball is my mobile phase. So what typically we use Al203 as my adsorbent. Here, and the different components, as you see in the animation also, right, different components of the um, metal is adsorbed at different level. For example, here also, right, this is my, let's suppose, metal, right, impure metal. Now if you see, as it goes down, as it goes down, 
they are separated. Why? Because the yellow ones are more adsorbed, so it, it's moving at a slower speed. The red ones are less adsorbed, it's moving at a faster speed. But at the end of the day, by the time it comes here, they are separated. And you can actually separate them. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.